It's long been known that vitamin D functions with calcium to keep bones healthy and avoid deformities such as rickets in children and osteomalacia in adults. But it is becoming increasingly clear that it also plays a vital role for our immune system, helping to fight off bacterial, viral and fungal invaders too. Vitamin D insufficiency affects almost 50% of the population worldwide. An estimated 1 billion people worldwide, across all ethnicities and age groups, have a vitamin D deficiency. This pandemic of hypovitaminosis D can mainly be attributed to lifestyle and environmental factors that reduce exposure to sunlight, which is required for ultraviolet B-induced vitamin D production in the skin. Black people absorb more UVB in the melanin of their skin than do white people, therefore require more sun exposure to produce the same amount of vitamin D in the skin. The high prevalence of vitamin D insufficiency is a particularly important public health issue as children, young and middle-aged adults are at equally high risk for vitamin D deficiency and insufficiency worldwide. In general, vitamin D sufficiency has been defined as 25 hydroxy vitamin D, above 30 nanogram per milliliter. 21 to 29 is vitamin D insufficiency, and below 20 nanogram per milliliter is vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D sufficiency is defined in terms of the serum level of the Prohormin 25 hydroxy vitamin D required for bone health, which is 30 to 32 nanogram per milliliter. Maintenance of a 30 to 32 nanogram per milliliter serum level requires approximately 2,200 to 3,000 international units per day of vitamin D from all sources, including ultraviolet light exposure food and supplements. Recommendations from the Institute of Medicine for Vitamin D Supplementation suggest 200 international units of vitamin D daily from birth through age 50 years, 400 international units per day for individuals age 51 to 70 years, and 600 international units per day for those age 70 years or old. Obtaining sufficient vitamin D from natural food sources alone is difficult. Consumption of vitamin D fortified foods and exposure to some sunlight are essential for maintaining a healthy vitamin D status. Dietary supplements might be required to meet the daily need for vitamin D in some group of people. Breastfed infants, older adults, people with limited sun exposure, people with dark skin, people with fat malabsorption, obese people, and people who has undergone gastric bypass surgery are belong to this group. The first step in treating vitamin D deficiency is to test 25-hydroxy vitamin D level in blood and then decide on the target replacement level and how quickly that target must be reached. Each 1,000 international units of vitamin D3 daily in addition to what the patient is currently ingesting will raise the level of 25-hydroxy vitamin D by 10 nanogram per milliliter after a few weeks. But keep in mind that more may be required for individuals who are obese because vitamin D is sequestered in adipose tissue. For individuals of average weight with insufficiency only during the winter months who get appreciable sun exposure during the summer, we usually suggest vitamin D3 supplementation only during the late fall, winter, and early spring. A woman with 25 hydroxy vitamin D level of 9 nanogram per milliliter shows evidence of severe vitamin D deficiency, and in this case, the 25 hydroxy vitamin D level should be increased as quickly as possible, with either 4,000 international units vitamin D3 daily or 30,000 international units weekly, checking the level again at 6 and 12 weeks. When the desired level is achieved, maintenance of 40 nanogram per milliliter is usually possible with 2,000 international units per day, but in the case of obese women, higher doses may be needed. The importance of educating patients, checking compliance, and monitoring 25-hydroxy vitamin D levels every three months during treatment of deficiency and early maintenance phases cannot be overstressed. A single whole-body dose of ultraviolet radiation associated with minimal erythema produces 10,000 international units of vitamin D. 15 to 20 minutes of daily sun exposure without sunscreen in lower Midwestern and southern latitudes between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. is usually sufficient to ensure adequate synthesis of vitamin D metabolites. Large excesses of vitamin D3 from prolonged sun exposure are destroyed in the skin. In contrast, with the exception of cold water ocean fish, food is a poor source of vitamin D. 3 ounces of herring, which few individuals eat, provides 1,300 international units of vitamin D. 3.5 ounces of the more commonly ingested salmon provides 350 international units, and 1 teaspoon of cod liver oil provides approximately 400 international units of vitamin D. However, the amount of vitamin D in 1 cup of fortified milk or orange juice is only 100 international units, with 50 to 100 international units per cup of breakfast cereal or tablespoon of margarine.
At similar doses, vitamin D3, chalecalciferol, may be more potent than vitamin D2, ergocalciferol, which is obtained from plants. Today, with more time spent indoors and increased use of sunscreen, higher basal intakes of 1,000 to 2,000 international units per day from supplements are recommended to avoid vitamin D deficiency.